So the last one I want to add, um, and this is uh, another area that is something that I've been just really thinking about, vote matters. Um, and this is kind of a little bit off um, from the other topics, the two topics about like parents being able to have their voice and parents being able to have their choice. This is important. But how does this translate into the parent voice and choice turning into policy? How does that translate into actual changes in our district? The, rea the reality is the nicest or most, most faithful person, right? The deepest person in the faith may not be the most effective in the world of politics. You know, for example, you know, one can be so too, super outspoken about the Catholic faith and opposed to most of the motions that are out there because like, it doesn't really align with our, with our faith. But that same person, while they are in opposition, is unlikely to get an alliance with the, the others on their council, on, on the, the council. Like, you won't get things passed. And we see this. We see this all the time in Calgary. Um, an example might be, like, Jeremy Farkas. Um, so he's a, a city councillor, and he's, like, he votes no on everything. Everything is, like, vote no, vote no, vote no. Uh, but when it comes to passing new regulations, he doesn't seem to have a lot of them approved. Well, why is that the case? Well, it's because the world of politics is a totally different world than like the world of your coworkers or working with um, colleagues. It's, it's a totally different dimension, right? Like in order to be effective, it's very important to understand the interest and motivation of the others on council. Like why are they there? What are they there for? What was their platform? What is important to them? What is part of their values? Because they're going to do things in alignment with that. And you're there to help, right? You can be there to help or you can be there to oppose. And if you're constantly there to like oppose their perspective just because, you know, it, it doesn't fit with your values, it is not going to be very effective in terms of pushing the needle forward, advancing Catholic education, and in the end, making sure that we, we put the best face forward, because that's what they're all doing in the end. They're all trying to work together in order to provide the best possible future for Calgary Catholic. And this is not an easy thing, right? Like, of course, people won't agree. That's why we have debate. That's why we, we have these discussions. And in fact, the more ideas that you present, the more options you have, this is wonderful, right? This discussion is what gives Calgary Catholic and all democracies their strength. But that needs to translate into policy. That needs to translate into actions, tangible actions for the people who voted for you. And that needs to translate into something that is like clearly a better direction or it moves us in, in the right path that is going to prepare our children for the future. And so there have been times where people ask like, oh, it feels like you're opposed to what we're doing. And my perspective has always been no, absolutely not. I wouldn't be running for this position of Calgary Catholic trustee if I was opposed, right? If I just opposed, like, I don't know, like I could, I could easily flame people on social media, like on Twitter, for example, or on Instagram. Um, but I choose not to because we're here to work together, right? In the end, like you may not agree uh, with the, the other perspectives, but you're here to work together. And sometimes if you can understand like, these are things that we can help each other out on. This is going to create a voting block or a voting alliance that is going to help get this motion forward. Then you've done something good. You've done something good for your community. And I don't think it means like, oh, you have to compromise on your values or you have to compromise on like your, your my, my values are, are so much science-based, right? Like you have to compromise on your integrity, your scientific integrity. 
No, no, not at all. Right? Like, of course, you're still gonna you're still gonna fully align with those, but you're here to get stuff done. You're not here to just oppose everything and like it's it's not about you. <laughs> I, like uh, that's that's kind of like a key message when it comes to the world of politics and political science. There are there are people who are great people. They are faithful people. They're they're some of the nicest people that that you know of. But it doesn't make them effective trustees because being nice alone isn't enough in order to get policies and votes approved. Um, and I think that those who um, our trustees, who have been trustees for a long time, they they see this. They see that the reality is, like, in the end, you have a vote, right? And you have to recognize that it is those people who you elect as your trustee that will make that decision. And that's why it's so important to make the decision that's going to be most effective for you in your council. You have many, many choices, right? But then ask, like, okay, let's say the election's over and that person is elected, what kinds of choices, right? What kinds of things are they going to bring forward? How has their record been? Have, have you seen action? Have you seen results from the work that they did? Uh, so for example, for myself, like look at my record, right? And Blessed Marie Rose, what did we do, right? We established this brand new council. Like look at all these events that we've done trying to run a cultural day. And then look at St. Isidore. We, we focused on wellness and we did activities specifically related to reconciliation. So don't look at what they say. Look at what they do. Look at what they vote. Look at, look at those actions. And this is, do the same things that our kids do, right? They don't listen to what we say. They listen to what we do. <laughs>